Hello, and welcome to Yarvaskir Rock of the North. I just accidentally pressed the Photoshop button on my quick bar, so we need to wait for a little while while it deals with that, because yeah. that is going to chunk. <laughs> Actually, it didn't take any time at all. Good. All right. Thanks. Quick bars are dangerous. That's your PSA for the day. Welcome to Yarvaskir Rock of the North, session 12 of the second campaign, following... A genuine party of good guys. I say that surprisingly because, you know, Yavaskir is often a place of slightly grey morality and uh, mysterious uh, alignments. But this party, with one questionable exception, is largely, you know, good heroes. Uh, Yavaskir, of course, being a long-running uh, connected campaign. There are a lot of other shows on YouTube uh, in the past, and a whole bunch of extra content, especially on Patreon. But enough about that. Um, Wait, who's the exception? No, I'm let's to learn about the exception! <laughs> because oh, last no. session ended with you... Well, let, let's, 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 let's wind back a bit. Last session, you uh, were looking for Peep's mother, who you have found a bounty notice that has Peep's mother's face on it. Now, the only person who knows that is Peep, obviously. Who, who knew that, who recognized that as a Peep. And Peep's mother is a human, despite Peep being a kobold, because Peep was adopted when Peep was just a little bab. Um, hence the name. Uh, the... You've been trying to track them, based on all the intel you've gathered. You found a different group. A gnome with a group of Northmen soldiers, who were apparently hunting a monster for the King of Ophenfer. And you were like... Why don't we catch the monster with you? Because you're you're just good guys. Uh, and so you did. You fought a, a, an ice serpent in the ice lakes around Bastillion. Uh, and you did defeat it. It did eat a couple of Northmen, but it didn't eat any penguins, which you were befriending. So that's, you know, the important bit. Because you guys were mostly there for the penguins at that point. Well, to be fair, the Northmen wanted to fight it. The penguins just want to survive, so... You don't know if the penguins didn't want to fight. <laughs> okay, that's fair, you know. We need to speak. Wait, I have to speak with animals. I can ask them. You could have spoken. You don't have the penguins anymore. The penguins have Shit. since mysteriously disappeared <laughs> along with Cinder. I forgot. Uh, I these, asked... these penguins have a death wish. <laughs> I, I could have asked them on. I keep forgetting I have to speak with animals. Oh, gosh. Okay. That is a that is a, a super like easily for, forgotten spell. The same with the gnome yeah. uh, one you get for being a, a gnome, but... Uh, that did come up every now and again in our old uh, pirate campaign on Patreon, which was always fun when someone would remember. Ah, they could speak just like birds. <laughs> but the thing is, animal, animals don't have much to say in Yarvis gear. They're just living their life. Uh, to the point of uh, the, the old classic story of party trying to talk to a giant snail. They ask a giant snail if any suspicious weirdos have been around recently. And the snail goes to this very long-winded description that eventually they realized was them. And, uh, that was that. So animals don't give you much when you speak to them, but you're welcome to try. Uh, yeah. you defended the penguin's honor and continued, uh, still eliciting the help of those guys. You know, they can't, you help them, they'll help you. And they did know where this camp probably is. You went to it. Uh, you, you walked right up to it during the day, because your plan was to do this at night, but now you know where it is. You don't need to search at night. This bandit camp is walled off with palisades. It has even a building, a lot of tents, some horses, and uh, Zach went up not Zach, Vincent, went up and was like, I'm a healer. Do you guys need a healer? We, we kind of want to meet, meet with you. And they were like, I don't know about that. And then yet again, as with what well, as with happened with the last group of soldiers, they started seeing Peep the Kobold as a great adult dragon. Uh, illusions addling their mind. The cause of which you do not know, uh, which has spurred all of the bandits to start getting their weapons ready and starting to fight. And so this is going to be a roll in initiative start of the session session. Because... Yeah. You are right at the edge of this camp, and they are ready to fight. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. start rolling initiative. Here's the camp. 
As aggressive negotiations it is. <laughs> aggressive negotiations. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's You're a right about one Let's thing, go. master. Negotiations <laughs> are sure. <laughs> oh no. Classic. If you think there's a lot of Star Wars quotes now, wait until we do the Star Wars show after this. Oh god. <laughs> this is gonna be it worse or better. If I don't oh, say I've got a bad feeling about this at least once an episode, there's something wrong with me that day. You hey. you gotta do it. It's. It, I just realized cool. I forgot to I forgot to finish leveling up because we leveled up too, right? That was the other yes. Thing. You leveled up at the end of last session. That's okay. I'm I'm easy. The the one thing is I get advantage on initiative, but I just rolled a twenty. So, <laughs> and then the other That's thing true. is just you uh, can do that in roll twenty though. So um, you can set up good. initiative advantage. <gasps> I rolled that to see how much HP I gain. Oh, baby. Okay. Let's nice. Go. Nice. We respect it. That's so good. Well, the regular bandits have a pretty shitty initiative, which is fair. We don't really question that. These bandits are mostly Northmen. You got a little bit of lore about them. Um, they're mostly kind of Northmen uh, from this area of the world that were displaced during the war or learn how to fight during the war around eight, nine years ago. Um, but a lot of them have continued doing banditry things. It's not that surprising because a lot of Northmen don't really respect <laughs> capitalism. Uh, you know, that's not their bag, baby. One of these, and the... Now, you've got your own Northmen, so you've got two two squads of Northmen in this fight. You've got your guys over here, and the bad guys over here, the bandits. You've got bandits versus soldiers. It's classic. Um, your group actually gets the first initiative, but they don't really know what's going on. You try to explain it, and... They sort of understood, but not the specifics. I don't think these guys, especially, you know, after a long march across the snow and whatnot, they're, they're, and they're probably half drunk. They're not like, hey, this is the same thing that happened to us. They aren't, they aren't seeing this this time. They're just seeing that the bandits are getting ready to fight. So they'll just advance a little bit. Um so that they're a little bit more behind you. But Peep, you are of course the center of attention. You saw, now you can only barely see it on your battle map, but right here, there is a little watchtower that, where someone was talking to you and uh, Vincent. Uh, and that's where you saw the red lightning kind of go through their eyes and then everyone in the camp, the same red lightning that Cinder said they saw before and that actually Adelhard saw through uh, using Detect Magic. Does, uh, is Peep within, uh, five feet of me? Yes, because technically you could be anywhere on Pearl, and Pearl's a large-sized creature because mounting rules don't exist in 5e. Yes. Okay. Okay, sure. um, <laughs> because of my aura of alacrity, uh, since Peep starts his turn within five feet of me, he gets ten feet of extra movement. Whoa! Okay. Damn, That's actually really cool. I always say, like, oh, I wish D and D five E had more movement abilities, and then there's like the occasional stuff like that. All right. Okay. So Peep is gonna move in. One, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. Use the extra, and then they're gonna uh, gonna take the dodge action. Okay. And let's say. As you're charging in, you know, you you are a tiny cobble, like two and a half feet yes. or whatever, charging in across the snow. Snow's not deep, it's very compact. Uh, all the people who, the, the, the bandits who were kind of getting their equipment, the marauders, they were getting their equipment ready. They are just like, ter like, this is the terror you would expect of someone seeing a real life dragon. Because in their eyes, you know this trick now, they are seeing Peep as a massive dragon charging through their palisades. So they're like kind of, holy shit, like they're swearing, praying, like one of them's like throwing their food into the, the fire and like getting their stuff. Like they are, they're reacting. People actually, I'm, this probably won't do anything because I've used my action already, but people, 
and just shut up. Lay down your weapons and no harm will come to you. You say this and you hear one of them. There actually, there are two halflings here. Um, they're like halfling rangers and hoods and cloaks and things. And one of them's like, the dragon's threatening us. It's taunting us. You're not even sure if they heard the words you said or if this illusion is even twisting those. All right, uh, I guess that's my turn. Snow. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Snow's just gonna run forward. Let's see. That's, uh, I'll just do is use arrows. Um, or use the arrow keys. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 35, 40, 45. And I'm, yeah, I guess I'll... Mm, I'm not gonna dash actually. Uh, well, yeah, I'll dash, I'll dash. I wanna get in there. So another 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, okay. <laughs> what is this chair down here next to the wall? Is that the fishing spot? It's a fishing spot. <laughs> this okay. is an ice. I actually was, I, I was gonna, I was always having to pause you and describe because I zoomed out from the chat and I was like, oh yeah, there's an ice. This is the edge of the ice lakes, by the way. Um, yeah. But there's literally like a carved hole in the ice with like a fishing setup next to it because, you know, okay. they're living here. This is a bandit yeah. camp and it's lived in. It yeah. takes a lot of effort to make something like this out in the snow. Um, yeah, I think I had like a couple more movements. I'm just going to move up next to Peep and yell out the same thing that Peep did. Basically, like, lay down your weapons and no one gets hurt. Okay. And that's it. We got some halfling rangers. I need to check the range of a short bow because that uh, knowledge isn't like automatically in my brain. I think it's eighty, but uh, gone are the days of knowing that off the top of my head. <laughs> I have a book that has this information in it. I don't need to remember shit. <laughs> It's like having a Rolodex of information at your fingertips. <laughs> a Rolodex. <laughs> yeah, so you are Snow and Peep out of range of regular fire, but they will um they will they will start taking shots at disadvantage. Uh at Peep. Similar to the last time, the focus is on Peep. So there's gonna be a miss. You dodged a crit with disadvantage. Uh, when the arrow strikes you, Peep, uh, it is a slightly, you know, enhanced arrow. It's got this kind of strange briar wrapped around it. Uh, the arrow actually kind of bounces off your chainmail slightly, but the briar kind of just digs in a little more, almost like uh, spiky seed pods do when you're like taking a walk through them. So the, the arrow ends up doing, like, one damage, but the briar does an extra three. And then um, the second halfling will start taking their shots. And your AC right now is 16, peep? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they're not going to hit. Yeah, they're not going to hit. So it's just like before, there's kind of a... Arrows fly in your direction, and most of them land in the sand, or maybe even snow is kind of carrying some out of the air in front of you, but... Vincent, you are on Pearl, um, your enhanced steed. Yeah, uh, Vincent will use Pearl to uh, run in there uh, with her movement, uh, which is 70 because she also gets my aura. Ha <laughs> Nice! Uh, yeah, we like of course. 15, 20, 25... <laughs> 30, 30. Vincent was just 30, jealous of, of Snow having 80. all the movement abilities. So now Vincent gonna go... is like, I'm going to chase in the <laughs> catch up. Um, actually, I'm going to go to right here. And then I'll use my action to dismiss Pearl. Okay. Um, and uh, I'll use my bonus action to cast Shield of Faith on Peep. Nice. Okay. Uh, so uh, he, uh, as it's, as free interact, he'll pull out his shield and just kind of project this aura around Pete, uh, and then stand guarding uh, to to defend him as well, or them as well. 
Nice. Okay. Adelhard, you're up next. Mm -hmm. uh, I will use my action to dash and use all my movement to get up here. No, up uh, here. Okay, that's it for my turn. Nice. Classic. Okay, bandits. These guys are relatively well armed. Uh, same to the soldiers before, I mean, the, the soldiers you met last session and still have, what have you? These are just two sides of the same coin, right? Really just two factions of the same peoples. So they have, you know, pretty okay equipment. They have uh, multiple weapons each, you know, usually a sword and like a hatchet and some, most of them have bows as well. Uh, their armor is the main thing that's a lot worse. They got, These guys have like hide or leather, you know, uh, it, it's, it's poor quality because it's difficult to maintain a lot of chainmail for a lot of people. Um, so some are going to start charging. Their swords. Uh, two here are going to start using their bows, which are long. First one just whiffs their shots. Second um, one, with Shield of Faith, that's a plus two? Yes, plus two AC. So it would um, just, that, sh that barrier would just barely deflect an arrow. Cool. You got something else, Zach? No, 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 no. That's it. <laughs> okay. Well, the last shot goes through, um, but you deflected a couple, uh, and it's a and it's a it's a strong shot. You know that person they they really worked it. These aren't enhanced arrows that the the human uh, Northmen are using. It will hit for a whopping total of eight piercing, and then um, one of the ones back here by this 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 black tap section is kind of a, like a log cabin. Um, and one will just kind of like thump, thump, thump very loudly on the wall. And they will actually yell out like, Here! There's a blighting dragon attacking the camp! And they will run out and string their bow and start firing at Peep, Maria's son. <laughs> and uh, both hit. In fact, one is a crit. The emotional damage that Peep felt hearing that Lowered his yeah. defenses. Keep his dodging. <laughs> Ooh, you mean you remembered on the last attack? <laughs> I, um, I forgot for the others. Yeah. So that would, that would negate the crit, <laughs> but you're still gonna take uh, ten damage from those arrows. Uh, all right, keeps keep a bit hurt. Peep, you are up next. Uh, okay. Peep is gonna move 10, 15, 20, move here. Uh, and we'll smack this guy with an axe hit. Is this lethal or non lethal? Non lethal. Okay. Uh, that's a hit. So, I'm guessing still standing? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Very few people hit. will go down to six damage. Most humans have ten on average, without years of experience on top. Uh, and this guy's got enough to take two humans of damage right there. Put together. Oh, this is so close. Um, I am then gonna. Is that what it's actually? Yeah, I am going to spend my bonus action to second win. Okay. It's D10 plus my fighter level, so D10 plus 5. Boom, baby! <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, Good stuff. That, that might not be in character right now, but that was an in-character interaction. <laughs> <laughs> Peeps motivated. Okay. That's Peep's turn. Snow. Okay. Snow is just going to run. Like I can go through Peep's space, no problem, right? As long as Peep's so... willing. 
Okay. So, Okay. As he runs by, he'll like he'll like look down at Peep and basically be like, um, he'll look down at Peep and be like, uh, alive. Alive. Okay. And, and he just will nod as he runs past. Uh, and he's going to rage and just, he's actually going to go like, like basically try to draw attention to himself. Um, and he's going to, yeah, he's going to rage and he's going to try to smack this guy down. Ugly uh, Yeah. No reckless attack though. Just, uh, okay. And here we are. First one. That's a hit. <clears throat> Okay, um, and the second attack here. That is also a hit. Okay. There's 22 damage for you. <laughs> One of the, the halfling, up? oh yeah, he is still up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the halfling okay. rangers will, will be like, Bleeding Edge, they've got a bloody giant as well. Dragons and giants <laughs> working together. The whole world's going upside down. <laughs> They will run up and kind of skid to a shot. Stop, and there you are close enough, Snow, for them to take some shots at you. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, their rolls are really bad, although they did have disadvantage. The arrow is just. Okay. The other one is going to stay in position and take some arcing shots at Pete. Big miss. I Same will. Uh, I'll use my reaction to impose this advantage on one of them. Are you near Peep still? Am I? No. I'm sorry, I'm not. Never mind. <laughs> I'm gonna be quiet. <laughs> the last one I didn't hit because of um, Shield of Faith anyway. Shield of Faith. So you're good. The door to the log cabin bursts open almost in splinters, and what charges out is a large dark grey wolf. It skids on the powder snow in a Tokyo drift and then launches towards a lot of you. Bouncing around the humans without much issue. Vincent. Um Vincent is going to move up here and I'm I'm gonna be purposely trying not to kill them. Uh, but I'm going to attack this one in front of me twice. Um, and then with my bonus action, I'm going to try to shove him away from Pete. Okay. Uh, yeah, the first one's a hit, the second one is a miss. That, there is almost no way they beat that shove. Uh, yeah. That's one of those things that kind of... They, they, you know, twist their stance around with their blade, and they kind of bring out another, like, smaller axe for parrying. It's like the Northman equivalent of a parrying dagger. They parry with an axe, because they're Vikings. Uh, and, like, tries to parry, and then you just, like, barge them, and they're like, ah! Oh. You knock them prone or back? I can't remember. Just, uh, knock them back five feet. Yeah. They, like, just do not expect it. And I'll step up to follow him and put myself between him and Pete. Nice, okay. Adelhard, a little touch of a full-blown war. A little more your combat speciality. Yeah, so a question. Does any one of these look like uh, they have more experience or some kind of leader of these people? As uh, often uh, is the case at D&D, all of them that look the same on the battle map are roughly the same level of experience. I mean, these are bandits, they have different, you know, little trophies and slightly different equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, the the halflings do look more experienced than the Northmen. Uh, they look like pretty well-off rangers, um, but none of the okay. Northmen bandits that you see right now look like they are um, in charge. Okay, I'm just going to use my movement to go here. And um, fire with the hand crossbow on the guy up in the tower. Okay. 
Yeah, it's a hit. It's a hit. Unfortunately, it's not an instant kill, because otherwise he would have Wilhelm screamed and fell off. But uh, <laughs> there is more health, health on that guy than that. He is going to immediately... Uh, he's actually going to throw his torch down at Adelhard. Adelhard, what's your AC? 15. Yeah, doesn't doesn't go hit. But it's then going to equip uh, the blade and start on down. Oh wait, I I, I just nearly skipped all of the Northman bandits. My accident. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the one fighting Vincent and Peep, they kind of like shake their head and they 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 go right back into it. Uh, Vincent, what's your AC right now? 18. <laughs> nope. Nope. Maybe they even do get a stray hit off and it's just like, doesn't <laughs> reach the layers of like proper plate. Uh, the one against, uh, Snow. He's gonna dance around him a little bit, kind of rakes their, their, their axe against the snow. Deliberate, like, kind of intimidation and confusion tactic almost. Uh, but they can't actually get a, a scoring hit against you. This one is going uh, to charge up, though, and take the advantage, which doesn't give them a damn thing. They still miss. <laughs> so now you could do, maybe you do, like, the sweet Anakin Skywalker back block. I mean, there's a lot of options. <laughs> yeah, and then something we've like got, that. And uh, bows. Peep is pretty obscured to them. Even the illusion of a dragon is pretty obscured behind a giant, uh, half giant. So the arrows are going to go towards him. One hit right away. Yep. That's going to be five piercing. Right. Then a second miss. Second hit is uh, six damage. Yep. And then one more hit. Rage. One more hit for two. Yeah. You could take the okay. arrows with your rage relatively well. Mm -hmm. We've got the, the gnome who's kind of leading your lads. And you got your lads. And then we got Peep, the original lad. A little boy. Alright, I'm just gonna move. Five, ten, fifteen, and I'm gonna smack this guy with the axe. Non -lethal. Still non lethal, okay. Yep, that will that will take him down onto the snow. Alright, so it's five, ten, yeah, Non lethally. I promise. 15, 20, 25, I'll stop there. Uh, and then again, another swing, non lethal. Yep, that's a hit. Nice. Where's my mom? Where is she? I have no idea <laughs> yeah, how he even the the, 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 the Northmen process that. <laughs> Terrifying, <dragon>. for sure. <laughs> they just see a dragon be like, where's my mom? Where's my mommy? <laughs> 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 That's an Where image you don't know. <laughs> That's an image you don't normally see in D and D, uh, or in any fantasy. Actually, I've I've done a quest where the party had to help a dragon find his mum before. What well, was a fully actually. grown dragon? <laughs> no, it was a well. It was it was it was a dragon. It was like the run to the litter, so it was grown up, but it was still really tiny. Okay. Oh. It disguised itself as a little dog. <laughs> uh, nice. Um, Snow is gonna. Okay, so this one he hit twice last time. Is he visibly wounded? Oh yeah, that guy is is okay. pretty beat up. But being a Northman, you think he's only stronger for it. You know, bleeding. Okay. Over the teeth, kind of thing. I'm just gonna reckless attack. Then we'll see how strong he is after this. Ah! We'll see who cancels who. 
17 do. You take him down. <laughs> it's not lethal though. I am Snow sure. is like he's into the battle, but he is still gonna. That's why he has to peep. Um, it's because he wants to make sure yeah. he goes non lethal. Uh, then he's gonna swing at the other dude. Um, between him and Peep. So I guess it doesn't even need to be just uh, reckless, but he's already done it, so. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can't turn off the recklessity. Yeah. It's a hit. Okay. Sweet baby damn do you hit. Um, you know what he actually is going to do? It's actually not going to be it, because I'm going to run forward, which will provoke an attack. Let's go! Um, yeah, I just got to figure out how much I want to go for it, but it's definitely going to provoke. <laughs> Yeah, let's go forward. So, cause, like, this wolf thing is, like, charging at us, right? Yeah. I want to charge to meet it. Okay. I can make it right to the... Actually, there will the be a hit on you because you reckless attacked from the yep. guy you were charging <laughs> away from. It's going to be four... Five slashing damage. Okay. Which becomes two, luckily, so I can make that. Mm -hmm. Um... So yeah, no, and, and so Snow is like trying to draw the attention from all these guys over here, including the wolf. And he's like, and like just charges at it. And uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. It's halfling hours. This halfling is going away from the giant, but is still going to be firing at Peep, who still has Shield of Faith because Vincent hasn't taken any damage or cast any other concentration spells. Uh, so even their pretty good shot is deflected by the silver light of the Dragon King. And, uh, one is gonna, like, approach the fire. They, like, stand, like, like, kick one of the logs people were sitting on right close to the fire and kind of stand on it very deliberately. And they take some shots at, uh, snow. Uh, but they roll like shit! They do but they roll with advantage. <laughs> <laughs> but they roll like shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, uh, nothing, uh, nothing hits. It's like they take this pretty heroic angle, but you know, Snow is pretty mobile and charging yeah. towards his wolf. And they don't want to hit the wolf either. Um, the wolf, as it's running, leaps into the air, seeing you get close. And as it leaps, you hear the snapping of bones and the wolf twists and snaps into the form of a werewolf. Um, full grey fur, a large amulet of a moon shape around their neck, and oh no. uh, just <laughs> oh kind of like a <laughs> battle-ready grin on their face. As, I gotta go yes, if I have immunity to disease. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I don't know if that would Wait, affect it. I do. <laughs> I'm immune to disease. <laughs> I <laughs> I, I don't know if it affects it, but I'm immune to it. Oh, no. It's good to know. If the werewolf starts fighting you, uh, then... We I, can... I think that's more of a curse thing than... I don't know. That's... that's yeah. Oh, shit. It's, it's, I don't have anything it's anyway, kind of so we'll see. <laughs> Let's play a game, I guess. <laughs> oh, no. You're playing a game right now. <laughs> Uh, that's to hit me, so <laughs> it does have advantage, so. Oh, yep, no. it leaps over and does make a bite attack, which. What's your AC? 15. <laughs> you somehow parry away the werewolf's bite, <laughs> even though it attacked you like a transformer spin attacking into its other form. Uh, yeah. Really a beast transformer. I can't remember what they're called, uh, so I'm a fake nerd. Um, <laughs> then as it lands, Animorph? it will make a claw attack. No! <laughs> That is not what I meant. <laughs> they're just like, they're just called the Transformers Beast Wars, wasn't it? I don't think they had like a no, special there's name. No, there's a there's a there's there's always a special name. The, Every the type Animorph. of Transformer has a special name. I never read any of the Animorph things, but the I remember the covers just always being so. The covers cursed. are are very <laughs> cursed, and I think it attracted you know kids to them. Uh, all right, I'm finally slapping snow right in his mouth with a face full of claws. Okay. <laughs> Shing. Uh, it is going to be f seven slashing damage. And okay. It's going to attack again, which is a crit thanks to Reckless. Yikes. Yeah. 
that that thingy. Beast Wars Optimals versus Predacons. Huh. That sucks ass. Uh, the second <laughs> hit is gonna be <laughs> twelve damage. Not okay. twelve. No 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 no. I said that absolutely wrong. It's way less than twelve. It is six. I don't know why okay. I thought twelve. It's six, which becomes three. Which becomes three. I think I was kind of count. I was like, I like reverse yeah. half it in my head for some reason. Yeah. Um, but now you're fighting yeah, a werewolf. I, I'm still looking snow. good, though. Vincent. Um. Uh, how bad is Peep and Snow looking? I'm still not even visibly wounded. Actually, the rage is okay. doing. The rage is putting in work here. I think Peep looked pretty injured before Peep used Second Wind. Okay. Uh, then Vincent will move here and uh, engage this uh, fellow here with his long sword twice. Yeah, both hit. Um, and then uh, he'll kind of um, force a, a shove on him as well with his, he'll try to batter him into this, uh, this corner right here. Okay. Thought you were gonna make him trip over the stairs. That... Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. That's still a success. He rolled badly. And then I will step into that spot. Okay. Adelhard. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Yes. Uh, I can get here. Uh, attack with the rapier. Yep, you have advantage. It's a hit. That's a hit. And it's exactly the and, damage um, you needed to knock him out. Yeah, it's non-lethal. Sure. You stab him really non-lethally. Um, <laughs> <somewhere. laughs> and then the bonus action attack from the crossbow towards... Okay, it's off range. Okay, no. Then we're good. Okay. Uh, there is the one guy fighting Vincent. They just, you know, Adelhard just stabbed him in the kidney. He only needs one kidney. <laughs> uh, exactly! <laughs> but what if he gave his Talk other kidney it. to his dying brother? <laughs> well, you know. You don't well, know uh, these guys! You don't know if there's kidney transfusions in Yarvaskir. You don't know! <laughs> Uh, the guy fighting Vincent misses all of his attacks like a nerd to the point that those are dice are now in dice jail. <laughs> everything not working today. The couple of others that are still around are going to keep uh, firing arrows, but they actually, considering Snow is now seemingly equally matched by this werewolf, that they, they know what's going on, they aren't surprised by a transformation. Um, they do get into different positions to keep firing at Peep. And that's going to be one hit for eight damage, piercing. Eight. You say eight. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Uh, eight, Still not great. Yes. And eight. then there's going to be a, a crit. But as Trey's tradition, the crit does less damage. It does four. <laughs> There's going to be another pair of shots of peep. Uh, both miss. And uh, another pair from that guy down at the back. Which both miss. It doesn't matter which dice I use. Enemies just can't hit shots nowadays. Your uh, your, your squad of goons are going to kind of block this main exit here. That's their position. Peep. Hey. Uh, Alright, I'm gonna move one, two, three, four, five, six. Do I still have that plus ten movement, or is that just from thingy? I think you have to start your turn near that. The that's. Distance. Yeah, yeah, you have to be within five feet of me at the start of your turn for that. Cool, cool. Uh, Alright, well, I will then. 
Seeing that Snow's team seems to be doing alright against Werewolf, I'm gonna fire an Eldritch Blast at this guy, so the one nearest me. Uh, yeah. Eldritch Blast. That is a hit. Assuming he's still standing, so I'm gonna fire another one at him. Yep. Well, fire damage is a lot, though. But that is oh. a miss. And then as a bonus action, wait, did I, did I do something stupid, stinky, or am I? Did you suppose? Okay, 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 we talking? Fine. Nah, it was fine. I'm fighting spirit. I'm gonna use fighting spirit, so I get five tenth HP. Uh, but that the bonus, the the advantage from that only applies to weapon attacks, which I don't believe Eldritch Blast is. So, so yeah, all was fine. I'm not a stupid, stinky idiot. So, and that's my turn. Snow. Um, okay, I have an idea. I want to use, I want to ask if I could do this. I have a movement for it. Um, could I use one of my attacks to grapple the werewolf and then drag it to the fire and slam it into the fire? So, <laughs> once you have attack? someone grappled, you can move with them. <laughs> it's just a difficult terrain move, so it's hard. Okay. Movement. So, yes, I if you grapple the werewolf. Uh, you can do that, but you have to grapple and, the werewolf first. Yeah, I'll try to grapple it, because I would have an advantage on that from Rage. Okay. Alright, let's see what I get. That's not great. <laughs> we got a 16. You got a, they got great. a 16 too. What happens now? I feel like Defender should win, so I feel like it should yeah, I think win. that is... I think this is a rule, but it's very rare in that kind of context that happens. Yeah. So yeah, you have an evenly matched... <sighs> You know, you try to grab this guy and they, they <laughs> resist. Because this is a werewolf, yeah. you know, there's there's humanity there. And they seem to know what you're, you're doing. They seem to have almost a classical brawler's experience, you know. They dig their claws into the snow in the right way. and mm. They actually will um, even what's got to growl out a, not bad. <laughs> the snow's going to just go, like, like, try to lunge for it again. He's going to try again. He wants to grapple it. He's not gonna be able to do everything he wants to do this turn, but let's see what we do. Oh they got fifteen! God. They got fifteen! <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly yeah, symmetrical I, violence. I feel like both of those, even with advantage, are below below average, below ten on the rolls yeah, for snow. Not I think that it, good. Yeah, it must be that snow is like um is like I think he's just kinda like uh a little thrown off by the the werewolf you know he's i mean he's probably heard of, he's definitely heard of you know you've heard of lycanthropes but yeah. seeing one is something else yeah he's definitely never fought one like this and so yeah. he's just not you know especially to him, so it looks suddenly. like a, yeah to him it like he thought it was just a wolf now it's like a dude wolf and he's like okay so no. i that's that's all he does then dude bro wolf <laughs> This uh, halfling is going to uh, kind of mutter out a prayer over their bow, and it's going to become a little green and shiny with echoing whispers of wind and magic, and they're going to uh, fire an arrow first at snow, which hits, but then <laughs> into vines, wraps around you, give me a strength saving throw at snow, which I know yeah. is, you know, probably your best save. Yeah, there's no way you'll fail. That. Yeah, hey. uh. yeah. See? Okay. Yeah, that's the uh, that's where the good rolls were. Right? Oh, and he's like, that's not happened before. Was just like, <laughs> snap the. Did take some damage though? Wow. A little bit, but not nearly okay. as much. You take the regular <laughs> arrow damage. Yep. Three plus four plus two. So that is. Uh, so it's six damage. Okay. What I said is not the actual numbers because I have like a weird shorthand for adding D and D dice that isn't yeah. actually math, <laughs> which is somehow quicker than doing <laughs> actual math. Because once you get out of school, yeah. real math doesn't exist anymore unless you're like a physicist. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Very true. It's the thing, you know, a whole bunch of adults you think would be able to add like three to a number. But every time, it's like really <laughs> slow in D and D. It's like, well, and you can't even blame phones for that. You can't, not really.
This halfling who's standing up on the on the log and the fire is like, "Come closer, you big ugly lizard!" And he's gonna fire some shots at Peep, and one's gonna hit, and it's gonna hit for seven damage, and they're gonna get a really good hit. Some could say a crit for thirteen damage. Then we have people okay. looking. Bit, bit bloodied, but standing. Okay. Ah, uh, werewolf. Their bite is a big old miss. They end up like kind of you could parry, and they end up biting your sword with a clang. And you notice that they have one uh, actually silver tooth, which is kind of funny because they're a werewolf. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, I'm going to draw back and uh, let's try and make their claw attacks, which one is going to hit. Okay. But this is, you know, it's a pretty equally matched fight. I mean, you, you rarely fight creatures that are attacking with claws and standing on two legs. So it's a little yeah. different to what you're used to. Mm-hmm. There's going to be 13 uh, slashing damage on the claw strike that hits. Okay. I can take that. Yeah, they seem to really be picking their their strikes, and when they do hit, they, they strike pretty deep. For those claws cutting way more than regular animal claws would. This is like an enchanted blade. <laughs> Vincent! Um... Uh, Vincent is going to leave this guy alone. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. He can't quite get there even with his new movement speed. Um, yeah, he'll just get here uh, and then take a, the dash action to get closer to Peep and then start protecting Peep from the shots. So you left the guy you were in melee with. So he yes, so he should get attacked, yeah. Uh, which is a hit. It's a stabbing longsword strike as you're running away for five damage. So you have to do okay. concentration on... Uh, you're, you're way ahead of me. You're good. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's everything. And five damage. Yes, yeah. that that's my uh, turn. Adelard. Okay, uh, I would like to cast Hex on the werewolf. Okay. Let's go. Uh, affecting the strength score to... Yes! Yes! Affecting the strength score to help out Snow, and then I'm going to fire at the one Vincent left alone, which is in the range of the crossbow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a hit. And one. Non-lethal. Yeah, he's like... He goes for the stab after Vincent as Vincent's running. He's like, ah, you'll be back! And then Adelhard just <laughs> pins him to the wall, like by his shirt or something. And he's like, ah. But not dead! No, not, not, none of them are dead. <laughs> and I'm going to use my. Your swords are set to stun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it for my turn. Swords are set Actually, had, like. I elaborated on D&D's non-lethal mechanics in the, the Oliverse system uh, that exists, <laughs> but I don't play because I'd have to make a whole thing for it in real time. Because um, I like the concept. I think it should be fleshed out a little. Uh, Peep, if you'll stay near me, I can heal you in a moment. <laughs> One of the Northmen and Peep's who, eyes. <laughs> One of the oh, no. who's uh, running up is like, <laughs> This guy says he's going to heal the dragon! <laughs> <laughs> and one of the other one probably is, He's probably one of those dwarfen denutters. <laughs> Swing out a blade. Uh, you know what? No, this guy is going to pull out a flail. Because, you know, everyone's got their own gear. Like, I'll use my reaction to invoke disadvantage on that one. Oh, yeah. Uh, it becomes a one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Flail gets stuck in the ground. (laughs) (laughs) Flail gets stuck in Peep's armor. (laughs) (laughs) No, you move. This one is going to take his arrow shots at Peep. Where one is going to hit and the other one is going to miss. For six piercing. Okay. This one is going to shoot at Vincent. Because Vincent is in the way. But neither shot hits. This guy's going to do the same. And they are going to hit! For three piercing damage. <laughs> well, there's one and there's two. Yep, not a problem so how, for you. How how much damage total was it? I got the second one was three. I didn't hear the first so, one. Second one was three. Uh, first one didn't hit you. The first one didn't hit me. I think so. Okay. If it did, you just got lucky, punk. <laughs> Peep. You're looking wild, you're getting struck from all sides. Um Okay. Uh, damn it. They've moved to what I had planned isn't gonna work anymore, but that's fine. I'm gonna bonus action of fighting spirit, get those five temp HP points. Uh I am going to take a swing at the guy in front of me. Uh with the axe. Non lethally, of course. Mm hmm. It's a hit. Uh, and another. Seems to be still standing. Barely standing, but it is another hit. Yeah. They take it. Uh, Peep's gonna action surge. Smack him again. That's a miss. Miss and again. That's a hit. He goes down. <laughs> hey! Just Stop. like grabs him by, well, like by the trouser leg and just smacks him about the face with the second hit. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna move or you good? That's Peep's uh, actually, yeah, no, I forgot I could move. Um, f- 10, 20, 30. <laughs> you get 10 more. You get 10 oh, I more. do. Next to that halfling. Snow. Right, that's my turn. You're up next. Yeah. The werewolf is x <laughs> Yeah, he's going to try to grapple it again. This, this time, well, unless it uses dex, I guess, but... If he uses strength, it'll have disadvantage uh, from the hex. And I have advantage. So, lunging forward, trying to grab it once and. Oh, there's a good oh, roll. They had a good roll, but they had disadvantage. You do grab it. <laughs> okay, so that's one attack. Now, I want to move it to the fire. Yep, you move. I'll move him with so, you. You just move that'd be speed. like. So, that would be 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, 25, 30, uh, 35, 40, 45, 50. Yeah. And like, I'm imagining, you know, it's trying to avoid stepping in the fire, but I want to use my other attack to just like Shove lift it in the, it in the air and slam yeah. it on the ground yeah, yeah, yeah. in the fire. Make me a, that, another attack grapple roll. check. Or... Yeah. Okay. You attack roll. You know that video of the kid who like is getting bullied and has enough and just picks the bully up oh, and yeah. just throws him <laughs> on the ground? Yeah. Okay, so, okay what, what roll do I need to make? Just uh, a, athletics uh, an armed or? attack roll. Okay. Uh, yep, I guess that would be the same thing. So, oh, you know what? Here, I have the, the punch thing. Just ignore the damage, I guess. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that does hit, and it's a lot of damage. The, the fur begins to burn, and they're trying to pull out of next claws raking down your arms but uh it's a lot of damage mm-hmm. okay and i guess like well yeah i don't mm. <laughs> P- snow would call the peep as this happened he's like should i spare this one too <laughs> yeah. 
Spare them all, yeah. Okay. Does it look like if I let go of it, it would still be on fire? No. Okay, well then I'm going to keep holding it <laughs> a little longer at least. <laughs> okay, so that's this all. Halfling's doing a dash up close and then do the trick it always wanted to do, but uh, it wanted to do it with Peep. It will kind of bring one hand into the fire and wind it almost into their hand and blow and use it to cast a nature spell. Uh, Snow, give me a dex save. Okay. I think I have advantage on this from, what's it called? Danger, Danger sense. sense. Yeah. Okay, so then dexterity saving throw. It's good I have advantage. Yeah. Yep. It's good You're going to take advantage. a total, so you save, but you still take four fire damage. Okay. From them doing that, but uh, not that much. And uh, this halfling kind of drops the bow and, and pulls out a, a short sword. And will uh, try and defend themselves against Peep, but they cannot get a strike against him. A werewolf is going to change forms into a regular wolf. Please give me a dexterity save to keep holding on to him. Snow. Okay. The bow well, will snap. <laughs> no, it's not danger. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's it uh... may lead to danger. But yeah, it is not dangerous. But it's not. Yeah. Okay, you still hold on. Uh, <laughs> so nice. now it is just a very large uh, dark grey wolf, and we'll start swinging at you. Okay. And it does still hit two of its attacks. So it's going okay. to... It is going to bite you. Please give me a constitution mm. save. Okay. Hold on, let me just double check if I have any... You almost feel like every time it was trying to bite you beforehand, it was holding back, but now you are holding it into the fire, and it is... Yeah. Fighting. Uh, yeah, I got nothing. It's just going to be a flat roll. Uh, okay. You're a barbarian. Wow. Surely your, dexter your constitution is good. Oh, yeah, it's let's good. Go. It's fine. Okay. Uh, eight piercing damage on the bite. Okay. And six on the claw attack. Okay. I am visible wounded, but I'm still looking all right. Vincent. Um. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Vincent will get here uh, and use lay on hands, uh, reaching out and just like grabbing hold of people's shoulders and just uh, infuse them with radiant energies and heal him for 15. Them. Is that going to be everything? Yes. Adelhard. Mm -hmm. I'm moving a little bit down into crossbow range. Right here. Am I? Yes. Uh, I'm done just attack. with the action. Shoot. Who, who are you shooting? Who are you attacking? Uh, the one down. The, this one. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that is a miss. I mean, there. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. Just barely. And they're gonna fight back. They're gonna fight back with a sword! And they are gonna hit you, Adelhard. Uh, shield? They're not going to hit you, Adelhard. <laughs> <laughs> there is the kind of like, you bring up the the the, the shield of arcane magic, and it's like, ah, blasted conjurers. Whatever happened to good old fair fight? <laughs> <laughs> then these two are going to start shooting snow in the back. <laughs> One hit. Okay. For six damage. Okay. The second guy's gonna start shooting two hits. For mm. six and then two. Okay. I'm still fine. And then the door to the cabin will open and out steps a woman, looks over the scene, and she has uh 
kind of mottled chainmail armor and and has a like a scimitar in one hand, like almost ready to fight, but it doesn't raise it properly. Like, Everyone, stop fighting! It's not a dragon. That's my son. I know we're going to take a little break. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> anyway.
Hello, we're back. So, the, the big question is, I guess I turned it off the battle screen. Do you stop fighting when uh, Peep's mother comes out and says stop fighting? It definitely makes, you know, any of the Northmen and the Halfling Marauder combatants kind of like, put the, lower their weapons and be like, what, what's going on? What, what? This is your son? Yeah. But, uh, I would... I don't know if on the defensive, but not attack. I think Snow would, like, stop holding the thing in the fire and instead just, like, go whoop and, like, yeet it. <laughs> like, try to, like, like, so that it's a far away from him, you know, but so that it's not he, burning anymore. The, the werewolf shapeshifts in midair and, like, lands. There's kind of like a log <laughs> part, kind of, like, lands like this against it and just, just kind of, like, smiles at Snow. Um, yeah, Snow in, is definitely in, still... In, actually, they'll turn, it back, they'll turn it into their human form, which is okay. a, uh, a a kind of slightly darker-skinned human, most of the Northmen here, who are pale as fuck, um, with kind of short dark hair and a silver streak and still a silver tooth, um, which is like a, a canine. Um, and still an amulet. Vincent, we'll, we'll back up, but we'll keep his shield and his sword raised at sort of a, a half-ready position. Yeah, Snow will also be defensive, but yeah. He, like, looks yeah. over. Back up will be defensive. And just drops the axe and just runs at her. <laughs> yeah. Maria, Peep's mother, will get down into a crouch and, uh, shumedly <laughs> accept a hug <laughs> that's coming. Unless, of course, you're about to just, like, swing... Bring out another weapon. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hug. Straight away. Okay. Good to know. Uh, yeah, she'll hug you. Uh, your mum looks a little, uh, actually quite a lot different than you remember. I mean, you never remember seeing your mum in armour, although it was definitely the armour in the house. Uh, her hair was usually longer, but it's still the same colour. It's not like it's grey. It's kind of like this straw tone, but it's a very practical warrior woman, like, low effort, shortcut hairstyle now. Um, she is in full armor, nicer than everyone else's. Weapons, equipment, uh, pretty well cared for. Um, and she'll uh, hug Peep, and uh, you can kind of feel her heart hammering in her chest as you, you, you hug her. And she does kind of like <laughs> touch the chain mail on you, and uh, what weapons are amazing. It's like, you've become such a little warrior. I, I, I've been trying to find you for, but I, I, I thought, where have you been? I didn't know you were still out there. Otherwise, I would have made this a, a lot easier. I, I don't know why exactly everyone attacked you. They said there was a dragon flying through the air. It's, it's, a, it's a long story for that one, I think. Okay. <laughs> We'll probably have time again later. Yes! This is my son. The, we adopted a kobold a long time ago. It feels like a long time ago anyway. So the, the other Northmen who are kind of like not sure they either lower their or like some drop their weapons in the snow completely and sort of start grumbling. Like, she'll stand up and but still look down at people like, if these are your friends then we have no reason to fight them. Yeah, they're the ones who got me here, and they've helped me along the way. This isn't just an elaborate trap, is it? No, I mean, I, we, I only okay. found out you were... They... No, that's, that's fine. I've got to be wary of such things sometimes. Hey, what, what, what's, why were you on a wanted poster? I mean... Like, a, well, I assume there's a bounty on my head. There is, yeah. But I, I don't... I mean, I only can just find you. I mean, I, it's been months. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of work. <laughs> uh, this is Mommy's work. So she does kind of throw her hands out. And you can kind of, like, <laughs> see that, like... She's having a bit of a hard time processing this as well. She did not expect this happening. This isn't like her, usually. 
where, where's Jenny and, and Ben? She just shakes her head and looks away, kind of at the ice. The ice continues south. I can explain. I can explain everything. Uh, it seems like you're ready for it. Maybe you can get me out of a jam this time. And she kind of looks at the anything. rest of the group as well. Snow has a cross look on his face. Oh, I was just looking at both Peep and his mother with like a very distrusting, suspicious look. Yeah, that's that's Snow as well. He does not have a tr like, he has a distrusting look on his face. You're not gonna trust the bandit mom? <laughs> <laughs> Who's like still Snow. wearing like bandit regalia, basically? <laughs> Snow does not like bandits, if there's one thing about him. Um, Vincent is going to listen intently, keep his, his opinions to himself for now, but he is going to start uttering a, a prayer under his breath uh, of healing uh, to heal up his companions. It takes 10 minutes, so. Okay, so you're going to start the chanting that probably right. grows. Okay. Everyone, relax. Uh... You were beaten fair and square by Peep and his friends, I think. We'll work out the rest of it later on. Pick anyone else up who, uh, who fell, and she's mostly speaking to the others. And make sure that they're, they're all right. I'll explain everything to you. Uh, with some food. Why don't, why, don't, why don't we have some food? That sounds good. Uh, she's gonna kind of um, motion into the log cabin which is clearly basically her almost like a captain's quarters where everyone else is staying outside in tents and it does have like a window but there's like curtains drawn over it um, and uh, she she leads peep inside but not explicitly anyone else but she doesn't close the door right away so others can follow if they want yeah, I'm not letting Peep go in there alone. Okay. Yeah, no. This is sauce. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the log cabin is practically decorated for a little more than survival. That while there was food cooking outside, uh, you know, in a like big pot and whatnot, uh, there's a little more stuff inside. Some bread, uh, uh, a large iron pot of butter that is clearly labeled to trade somewhere it's not there it's here you know like clearly stolen uh, a couple more things like that there are some chests there are chains uh, changes of equipment um there are changes of equipment that she must have had for a while um how long has it been exactly since you last saw it since your, your mom and dad were attacked and you were abandoned uh... I think it was about six months when we started. So and... it would be like a little over a year, probably. Like yeah. 13, 14 months or so, maybe. Yeah, somewhere around there. Somewhere around yeah, there. Yeah. This is more than a someone's... Either... This is more than someone's year of equipment. Uh, you know... Some of it is older and... In, in disuse, there's like an old helmet isn't being used anymore and stuff like that. In fact, the helmet is upside down and has like coins and things in it and like a potion. Like, it's lived in and she seems very used to living this way. Um, but she'll uh, go over to the little table where there's some food and stuff and start cutting up uh, bread and buttering it and cutting up some smoked sausage and stuff and it, all of a sudden just the sound and the motion it's like memories to peep you know this is very normal but then your mom is wearing chainmail and has a scimitar at her hip and, uh, we'll hand a, a, a kind of serving to everyone in like a little wooden bowl and then uh, kind of looks at Snow and hands him another Snow is 
a big half giant. I... I never wanted to tell you or... or Jenny or, or anyone this. Your dad knew. Um, before I met your dad. <laughs> it's, it's so tricky to explain. Uh, so I'll just, like, I'll say it simply. But before I met your dad, I... I was this. This is what I did. This is what I knew. Uh, I didn't, your dad didn't force me to change or anything. And I didn't. It's not like I, you know, attacked your dad and we fell in love. It just kind of happened. Uh, and I decided to stop. But I was good at this. I led these people. We, we did well. Uh... You know, sometimes you do things you're not proud of. And I won't tell you it's always for survival. Sometimes it's more than that. Sometimes survival isn't just putting food on a plate. But I stopped. And I thought I was out. But someone made sure I was back in. And... That's why we were attacked that day. I didn't think anyone came out of it alive. I wasn't in on it. I thought we were... You know, it'd been a long time. I thought we were safe. It's impossible to explain. But I mourned... So the the people that attacked us aren't 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 these people out here. Yes or no? It's there's more to it than that. I owed more than just money to someone. Uh, you might see a group of bandits and think they're just out here doing their own thing, but it it takes more than that. There are loans involved of money of people of equipment and um, someone owned my debt and I thought I'd squared it all away because uh, the loan shark died they were killed but before he died he sold my debt and I let my guard down I used to sleep with uh, an arming blade uh, just a little under the mattress just in case, you know, I had backup plans, but there was a, there was a gnome named Smoke. He, he managed a lot of money and crime going out of Lendir, and we were always close enough. And there was getting supplies to us. There was manpower. There were people hired through him, and there was a debt because it always goes up once you start a debt. And when that when that son of a bitch died, I thought we were out, but he sold our debt to a third party and they they made me come back in by ending my distractions that's how they put it so what happened to Jenny and Ben then? Because I, I saw them walk away with you. There were a lot of attacks. I thought that you were gone too. And I don't want to think <laughs> too much about it. I don't want to see all of those things again. They're not here. And they sure as hell made sure they never would be. I thought they did the same to you. Like they did to your da. I should've I should have I should have thought you would have got away. 
<laughs> I guess I should have had more hope. I hid in the bushes while it happened. I had to bury Dad out there. Who were they? Because I am going to hunt them down until there's not a single one left. So man Velheim, his name is Agahast. He owns my debt. You won't beat him in a phrase up fright, otherwise I would have done it. He's cleverer than that. So I guess he wouldn't have expected this if I didn't. Do I believe her? Can you give me an insight check? I also want to. <laughs> Roll yeah. your insights, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> Suspicious mother! <laughs> Criminal mind. <laughs> roll your insights. Let them roll. Roll them bones. Buying it. I'm buying it. She's very hard to read. The way she's glossing over a lot of the losses, however, while at face value might seem false, actually does speak to a very pragmatic woman. Uh, just surviving um, to Snow and AJ at Edelhard. You've seen this before in people, in battles. You know, maybe someone loses their best friend. They don't speak about them ever again. Sometimes. Some people. Depends on the people. You don't know if she's telling the truth entirely, but the way she's acting... Almost the suspicious way she's acting can be explained quite easily. Or maybe she's taking advantage of that. But it, it does... The way she's acting makes sense. Even if it doesn't at face value, maybe to some people. Snow would... Pipe at this point, he'd be like... Mostly directed at Peep, he would say... If we can find this man, what was his name? Agahast. Ag Agahast. If we can find this Agahast, I'm sure we can deal with him. Where is he? Velheim. I've never met him in person. I I did dealings with the gnome. And the gnome was dealt with. This was all third parties further away. I hear he just. The man in a chair that collects the, the teeths from such things, prevents the occasional prying eye. Where is that? Where is that in relation, uh, relation to us? Velheim is on the east side of the north of Yarvaskir. So where you're at right now, the kind of the ice flats ish below uh Ofenfur, on the opposite end of a mountain range is Velheim. It's where Adelhard comes from. Okay. So a long way by foot in snow, but you don't necessarily have to travel by foot. To find him, and I'm gonna burn everything he has to the ground. That would be uh, I. That wouldn't undo what's happened, but it would allow me to have a future other than this. Maybe. it for you, for Jenny, for Ben, for Dad, for everyone they've hurt, so that no one else has to suffer like this. 
you kind of like, especially those who did a good insight role, you kind of, just the, the way she's looking, he, it, it is like a mom when their kid's sort of saying something very larger than life. There's kind of, there's not so much light in her eyes. She doesn't necessarily believe Peep can do this, but also isn't stopping Peep. She doesn't say anything, she kind if, of leans on the counter. If Snow picks up on this, then uh, he would like, kind of like trying to get her attention. He'd be, he would point to his armlet, like the, the band around his arm with the fireballs, and he would say, we've taken We've fought fire giants at this point. One man will not stand in our way. Yeah. Out of help, what's other hand, it depends on the political power of this man. Yes, there are many kinds of power. Magical is but one. And if she's scared of him with the power she holds here and the sway that she holds in the small army, it may not uh, behoove us to go running in blindly. I'm not scared. I am aware of the situation. I didn't say your fear was irrational. I think it's best that we see what we're getting ourselves into. And if we can't get to him directly, then what we can do is make it too expensive for him to consider her debt necessary he's not we an are good if... figure he he can be bent if not broken we are very good at being destructive and costing people money it's something we <laughs> excel at this is kind of a tailor-made mission for us she does smile slightly at that and looks at the the you know the holy symbols across Vincent's armor and equipment and whatnot. A little surprising from someone of your church, but I guess dragons come with destruction. There are many ways to fight war, especially against a stronger force. Indeed. And if this person is in Valheim, I have connections that are on deep. Hmm. <laughs> Maria will like squeeze Peep's cheeks a little bit, which don't really give much give because I guess you're a cobalt. But uh, she does just kind of like <laughs> lean down and smile. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. You're off to having adventures, fighting giants. You're gonna have to tell me. All about it. I, I, I fought a giant before. Your dad didn't let me tell story, your kid's stories about all that. But when this is done, I think. Because if you stay here too long, Agahast's eyes could see. I don't know. I've learned that I can't necessarily predict this man. If you didn't predict this, then he won't have either. It'll be a nice little surprise for him when a little dragon comes knocking. Yeah. I hope Nero's eyes speaking of dragon. We should solve this issue you are having before we go anywhere near Valheim. Yes, my men don't. We're bandits. We steal. We occasionally no, no, kidnap, but we don't... Yeah, I know, and she's speaking <laughs> before he does. It's rare that they attack on sight. It's rare that they think they've seen a dragon. They know the difference. Even uh, you know, a couple of them don't have all of their arrows in their quiver. That was out of character. Or most of them. You know, Remford probably would have still tried to wrestle with your big one. But that's... <laughs> just comes with the territory. The surgeon... The rest of the match, so it's no problem. 
<laughs> this is the second time we've seen it. It's a surging enchantment that makes people believe that Peep is a dragon. Are Rightfully so, because Peep is a dragon, but... You are in just as much dragonic regalia. You know, maybe your nose isn't as long, but if someone is mistaking Peep for a dragon, they would mistake you for one too, right? That hasn't happened yet. Seems to only happen to Peep. Peep, you feel laughter in the back of your head. You know when like the ki a kid's done something bad and they know they've done something bad and their mom's right there, but they don't know if <laughs> oh. like, they're just like Peep goes from like all the bravado to very withdrawn. <laughs> how, how obvious is that? Yeah, I would say insight um, rolls versus uh Yeah approval uh, of deception, I guess. Yeah, baby. Okay, mom's doing insight. Yeah, I don't think stats so. not gonna roll insight because I think he just <laughs> <laughs> Snow just kind of trusts Peep like implicitly now, so he's not even gonna. He doesn't suspect anything. Or does Vincent? Peep can do no wrong. <laughs> Peep, you just see your mom's eyes flick down at you for a second. We shouldn't stay for too long. Uh, you can resupply here if you need anything, and then you should head to Belheim. It's. <laughs> It's a long dirge we don't often steal on the roads near there. It's possible to go through the mountain if you head back into Ophenfur and you're friends with the king, apparently. But other than that, you've got to go around. All over. Did you, uh... We'll find our way. Right. She'll kind of usher towards the door for you all to leave and... Outside, the marauders are being patched up, uh, and some are kind of, you know, impressed at the fight, and others are more bitter. Uh, depends. Uh, some are talking with the other, the Northman soldiers from, you know, Ophenfur and the Gnome, like that. They, they, they've been chatting while you've been chatting. Anything you want to do like around with the camp before you leave? Do we need anything rests, from here maybe? before we go? So I know you're gonna probably head off in your tower and fly away, but you might want to um, rest before you leave. I'll, I'll finish at least finish off that spell. Um, oh yeah, well that's it then. You don't need a short rest if you finish prayer of healing. But mm, so, you'd probably need to start it again because you started talking. Yeah, talking. Yeah, <laughs> you could do it again yep, yep. for ten minutes. Yeah. yeah, so I'll do that. Um, it heals up to six people, so I'll heal four of us and then two of the more badly wounded of theirs. Or, or of our, our, um, our, our um, no, they Northmen. Wounded. They're not wounded? Okay, then of theirs that we wounded. Yeah. Uh, but it's 2d8 plus two per yep. person. Yep, go ahead and roll so. it, and Zach, and then we'll, we'll, you guys can apply it. Um, and I imagine, you know, you said it's kind of a very low prayer, but it probably becomes more obvious near the end what you're doing. Um, and especially that healing, because 17 points of healing, you feel it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. It's enough to almost instantly and deliberately seal any wounds that might have bled or get infected or any bones that were set in the wrong way. Like, that's exactly what a prayer to the dragonkin like this does. It's like, yeah, you, you need to be set to get, to get going. And that's what it does. <laughs> you know, it doesn't necessarily fix the bruise that might form, but it, it fixes the damage. As best it can. The uh, the werewolf, who is a human again, um, uh, Adelhard, you would be the only person to be able to tell the difference between Northman and a Raven Lord, but he does seem like a Raven Lord. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and he does kind of give uh, like he he's somehow found it like a horn of ale. And he does kind of raise it to um, snow. Like, so you're that big all the time. Yes. You fight well for a little man. <laughs> I'm big where it counts. <laughs> snow, snow just chuckles and, he's, and, and just gives him a nod. He, he 
seems like he is gonna say more stuff, and he kind of has the beer horn like to his mouth, and he does. He did what I did, did where his mouth's like open as he's about to say something, and then he just doesn't and drinks. Yeah, yeah it doesn't seem doesn't like any of the other people are are currently enchanted. If they're looking at people, they're looking at people at eye level. When they're looking at people in Enchanted, it's like they're looking up. Before you go, um, Maria will take Peep aside, and actually slightly outside the palisade, crouch down and be like, You know why people are going mad when they're seeing you. A friend said this has happened before. I'm not saying you should tell your friends. Knowing's good. I kept a lot of secrets from you, so I can't tell you to just tell your friends. Um, I can't. But... Just tell me now that you're on top of it and that you're going to be okay. Yeah, I mean, I, it was all kind of, it's all went pretty quick, but I mean, I mean, I made a, a pact with Micra. Tyrant of Dragons. Tyrant is never a good sign. No, but I... I want it to be stronger. And sure, I was swinging a sword around and I was fighting things, but... If I really was going to be able to help people, I needed to be even stronger. And then I was made an offer and I accepted it. She kind of like shakes one of your shoulders where maybe there's like a little shoulder pad or something. So, you know, your arm has grown over the years of stuff you found and whatnot. And uh, I guess you really are my son. Maybe in uh, a couple of months or a couple of years, I'll help you take down your loan shark. Maybe a little more difficult, but yeah, maybe. You can beat this Olvaxian son of a bitch. And all people say about him in the right circles or the wrong circles. Then surely you could beat a tyrant of dragons. With some help. Yeah. You always were good at making friends. Thanks, Mum. She'll uh, she'll stand back up and and go to the rest, and she does, you know. She's not quite like the mom of these bandits, but like a little bit. Like she does kind of like swat someone who was like pulling at their bandages and um, goes to talk to the the, the werewolf and whatnot. Anything else you guys want to do before you start settling off with your your people? And do you want to take the the gnomes and the northmen with you. If I actually, as probably to Vincent, uh, the gnome, which you never got the name of, uh, the gnome paladin will go up and be like, I could arrest them. I don't know what uh, deal you've made with them. I'm not saying I will. If that's necessary, we could. You are muted, Zach. Every time. Yeah, every um, time I, you want to say something vaguely important. I, I don't think we should arrest them just yet. They seem to have... Uh, they're pinned between a rock and a hard place currently. Maybe we go see what the uh, the rock looks like first and see uh, where that detail lies. We all have our patrons, and mine is the king of Open Fur. King Fenos has opened a hand to many people that others would think criminals. A reason why a lot of uh, 
these people left is because he accepted some of the goblins into his forces. Because he's so good in them. Um, or something. <laughs> Maybe he's just too practical to turn down a talented sword. But if it's legal forgiveness, they might need... King of Ovenfur is a good man. Perhaps we can discuss that when we figure out what's going on from where we're headed. Are you interested in pursuing this lead? This may lead to a bigger uh, a bigger fish in your pond for legal vindication. Uh, I stopped fighting solely for the gnomes because of the politics. It is a lot easier to fight an ice serpent than it is to uh, knock a wealthy gnome off their throne sometimes. Me and my men will head back home, I think, with the the body we defeated. But if you're ever in the, uh, the king's palace in Ophenfur, his keep, uh, maybe we'll be around. If you need an extra sword, call me. You're nodding at me, you know, probably like a handshake. And, uh... Full blown, like Roman, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it always is. It always is, unless you're dealing with an asshole in like Yavis gear. Pretty much. <laughs> uh, and he'll start leading his men back west, where the uh, ice serpent body was. In comparison, where you are now, leaving you guys to do whatever you want. Do we need to stock up on anything before we head out? Trail rations, um, Not really. refill refill of our kegs and casks, anything of that nature? Maybe, but then you'd have to fly to a supply depot, really. These guys don't okay. have enough to help that kind of thing. They could get you more like arrows and such, but... Uh... Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think we're probably good to go. So, so Vel Velheim... Where's like that's the region's name, right, or the kingdom, or it's whatever. It's a country, yeah, yeah, country. It's a queendom. I'm sure okay. Adelhard would be the person to to uh, to state that for the last fifteen years or so, it is explicitly a queendom. It's like new maps, which is probably none of yours, say <laughs> the queendom of Velheim. It it okay. appears as a country. Uh, if you have a very up more updated map of the area, it's actually locked up into kind of districts. But okay. Adelard is the local, um, so they're the one to ask. Yeah, I guess as we're starting to like, as we leave and are flying that way, at some point we could have a discussion about that. And well, you need to work out how you're flying mm -hmm. too. There's a mountain range in the way. You could yeah, fly over. You could can... fly around. You could fly around the waterways. These are decisions to be made um valheim is coastal so you could fly around a long way around the water adelhard are there threats in the mountains of valheim what what what's the deal? the mountains around valheim are actually relatively safe as like mountains in the world go uh because anything too dangerous is kind of dealt with um but they are tall mountains they, they are a physical issue if you were to fly something around it. And they're very hard to pass because it's very steep. So you don't you don't make plans involve climbing that mountain unless you're like one of the weirdos who lives on it. Um, flying around it might be awkward because you might have to fly high. You don't know how high this thing flies or you don't really have... This isn't a ship. You don't usually deal with the Z-axis when you're sailing. So it's a little different. Um, going around... Just a little. Yeah, going around the south ways would be easy, but fairly visible. Um, and then it depends where and you... So would be land. the coastline. And so would be the coastline, but you might be able to pull some tricks there because you know the coastline a lot better. But, uh, yeah. Again, this ship is not stealthy. It is a golden tower. 
flies. Yeah. Up. I, I, I think Are we there should... any good places to land, like, outside of any large settlements and cities that might be, like, fairly inconspicuous? So Valheim is almost one giant city. It's not like Goldport, mm -hmm. which literally is one giant city because Goldport is the most populated city in Yarvaskir. Um, but it's close. Uh, the... In a, it was a giant city. It was literally a city of giants in an ancient age, and you can tell. And in the districts of this city that have been kind of reformed and reinformed, there are different settlements of peoples. Um, as such, uh, you can kind of hide the tower amongst the towers of this place, but then the difficulty is you would be flying over people. Um, yeah. If you had the balls to do so, the Moon Queen's Palace <coughs> is closer to the south, it's one of those areas that you you wouldn't be flying over many places, and you have been told that one time one of the only airships in the world parked at the palace, like against it. Arhal does not have the balls to do that. Good, probably, <laughs> probably safe. So other than <laughs> that, that sounds it would like be, a really bad idea. It would be a trick. It would be a a a trick at the time if you timed it with the weather. You might mm -hmm. be able to actually hide the ship, like be completely unseen, because it's a it's a coastal northern city, in the, in in springtime. But if you time it with rain or fog or cloud, and then you do a good roll, you might be able to enter sneaky enough to not worry about it, really. Okay. Or I'm you could just out. park quite a ways outside somewhere, either on the mountains on the uh the east of town or on the west coast or uh, south I, I think we do need to err on the side of caution here we don't want to know but we're ready to give away our presence in this situation yeah cool just land somewhere else and get a ship to go home i was gonna say that you you would actually know like islands that have like tiny little raven lord depots on just for like mm -hmm. supply and stuff and you could find a way to contact someone and do it that way but then you would be away from your base basically but it would be completely safe you but the then the raven lords would know the, the raven lord navy yeah that might be good you don't know it's up to you mm -hmm. i think snow would defer to adelhard adelhard seems like the best the expert here. Agreed. <laughs> this, is, no. this is Peep's quest, so you yeah. should probably have a say. But what, what, what would Peep like to do? Do you want to get there as quick as possible, but if they know we're coming, we might hide and we won't be able to find them, so I guess quick but stealthy. I, I would <laughs> say as... The most important thing is they don't know we're coming. Even if it takes a little bit longer, if they don't know we're there, they're not really going to move. So. Whatever mm. the stealthiest option is, really. I mean, if we go the ship load, I'm not going to try and uh, shut up the Navy. We can try. If it. there's one thing about your people. They are very discreet and do not gossip. Mm -hmm. That said, they're also very organized and everything is written down. Yeah. So on one hand, it's not going to be like gossiped, <laughs> but it will be logged. <laughs> it will be written down somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Adelhard will actually mention it. That that will be the downside of going that road. But if it's just with your people, then there's not really much to worry about, I don't think. It depends where this person has connections. Ah, oh, true. Who knows how far this person's roots go? Yeah. 
if we can get me into the uh, into the with the common folks, I think we can find out more information. But we need to get there quietly and quickly. We call the rest. We could try just hiding in the weather. That might do the trick. Well don't. You know, fly along the coast in like heavy fog or something. Cold milk. Let's give it a shot. Make sure to only fly at night. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That'll be slow. But they can get you going. All right, let's take a little breaky brew. We'll be back in a couple of minutes.
All right, me and my little pog champs are back. So, uh, your plan is to hide in weather. Um, one way or another. It's a long route, especially if you're traveling at, 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 at mostly at night, which does help because you're in the day, your tower is really, really bright. What are you guys doing? It's going to be like a week of travel, especially because you're going quite slow. Um, again, you're in a flying tower. It helps a lot. Uh, what are you guys doing? Are you doing anything during the day when you're not traveling? What's the... Giant classes, right? Yeah. Uh, you still doing giant one classes? One class Why don't yeah. you just do another Adel week of giant classes? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Adel Hart and Vincent, right? Were the ones that wanted to learn mm -hmm. giant. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Yeah. That's I don't know how good of a teacher Snow's going to be, but you know. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. No, I think, as I said before, it's probably going to get really diff... Like, Probably really good at this beginning for Giant, and then when it gets to like the complexities, it's gonna be really, really tricky. I think for Snow to do it. Not like can that. always uh, can always pick up a how to learn Giant for Dunn's book. Be good. Yeah. You do need to spend money to to finish the translation. I can't remember how much it is, but so you will yeah. need to buy some books and equipment and whatnot. It's kind of part of the process. So yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, that you can definitely do in Valheim or somewhere they else. You gotta be able to practice their runes, you know. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. One of the few languages I don't actually know what it looks like in Yama's game. Most, <laughs> most of them have a dialect written down. Yeah. Not quite Lord of the Rings level, but some of it. I think um, during this this mm -hmm. flight, Peep's gonna Peep's gonna come clean to the group. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Oh. Luckily, Sabriel isn't here. Oh gosh! The, the, the no, Sabriel is in Valheim. Sabriel is in Valheim. Oh. Yeah. The but you're not at the tower, they just like, explode. Um, I guess like people would like gather everyone together, like in the main room. Uh, so, uh, you know how the last couple of times we've, you know, met some people, there's been that weird danger lightning that made them see I was a dragon? The charming spell. Yeah. Y yes. I know what's causing it. I don't know if it'll happen again. Knowing. Peep, give me a will. charisma saving throw. Oh, no. <laughs> Bitch, I knew it. I knew it. I knew she was going to. I was like, it's probably going to happen again. <laughs> oh, no. Peep gets a little tongue tied as the floor drops under you slightly the uh, air is thick now the rest of you nothing happens you're gonna not see this you might notice peep hesitate but for peep the moment stretches and elongates as you are dropped into darkness you see six red eyes burning through the uh the darkness and then it, it coalesces into actually more micro than you've seen before. What surprises you is that while you see two draconic heads on the side, the central eyes are human. The central body is a human woman. Um, relatively young looking, uh, with hair actually not too dissimilar to your mother's. It's short, it's black. Um, her... The draconic heads, one has like a long horn, the other one has two twisting round ones. And they're kind of almost connected to her back, like wings would be. Like the necks of the, the wings. She's some kind of strange draconic angel. And she's looking at you, and you're just kind of in, in darkness. Although there's like almost stone around, and there's a lot of heat. You can tell them the truth. But, if you want to continue to live and gain my power, what you have been doing a good job with, you must convince the paladin that your powers are from his creator. Maybe I'm an extension of that. You wouldn't know him. 
But if you tell him otherwise, well, he is not going to want you to do. But if you tell him, but I am of his ilk, and that your power comes from his adamantium dragon, king of an ancient realm, then all of a sudden you are blessed by the divine instead of the much more practical and true. The divine will be the helpful wealth like you. So you Do this, and you will continue to burn through your enemies. I promise you peace. My darling child, I will grow the truth with my ears of your bones again. You know what it's like to be a dragon now. I felt your fury, frustration, lesser life. Okay, I'll do it. That's a good boy. So Peep just seems a little tongue-tied for a moment, but honestly, that happens to Peep pretty often. That's kind of how Peep talks. <laughs> Sorry, it's... it's a bit... weird. Um... Basically... I'm... I'm being... tested to see if I'm worthy of having the powers of a dragon. Tested by who? Yes, by who, people. And that would include charming people to fight you. The, it was by... I, I don't know their name, but... They, they, they said they were like an, an, like, like an emissary or like a, a like a, an offshoot of the, the adamantium dragon. You're, you're being approached by a rovagon. I, I, I didn't say their name, but I mean, mate, that might. Yeah, I mean, they they said it was so that I would know what it was like to be a dragon, and apparently I've so far been doing well. This is excellent news, Peep. You've been chosen. This is not excellent at all if this continues to happen. I... Especially now that we are entering cities. Uh, it's not out of the realm for Orovagon to challenge his, his most trusted followers. We have been able to subdue our enemies without much death. No, try that in an entire city. Hey, hopefully it won't happen With again. a standing army. I can always try and touch again and, and see if I can make sure it doesn't happen. I mean, it... I think the test is over now. I just don't know what the next test will be. Or when you've, it'll happen. You've passed with flying colors, just like I knew you would. You truly are a little dragon, peep. Thank you. Just inside, peep's like, fuck's sake, I wanted to come clean, and now I'm <laughs> even deeper in the lie. <laughs> How it happens. I just thought. I think this... <laughs> I'm sorry. I just thought I'd, I. It was all a lot to 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 explain when it was happening, and I just. Sorry, I didn't say what was happening sooner. I'm sure you had your reasons. Part of the test, I imagine. Carol Hart has a uh, uh, very mistrusting look on his face. 
it's just <laughs> deception insight. Shall we see? Oh, are you Pulled doing that, the guys? Shall we see? If you want, sure. if you two want, I, yeah. I legally right. can't stop you. <laughs> oh my god! Oh! Me. Oh! Okay, so oh. you know, because we kind of don't always do. I feel like that's like Peep is perfect oh, at blindness. Peep, you know, Peep, Peep, like all the reasons for Peep to, to like. Peep is getting surprisingly good at lying, but Adelhard, you're still you you still definitely have your suspicions. You're not proven it. I think the, the numbers speak for themselves. But maybe your suspicions are more about the test than about Peep, perhaps. Mm. You know, what would a goodly dragon do enchanting people with red lightning? Yeah. Snow Nothing good is ever red. Like... <laughs> Snow will be like, um, I I think this calls for celebration. I think we should bake a cake to celebrate. And, nice. and, and, you know, drink some meal. I mean, that's kind of important. We should. I could, I could have to do with a few drinks. Yeah. Okay. Who's baking the cake? Uh, Stella try to bake the cake. It is an intelligence check. Oh, yeah. That'll, uh, <laughs> this'll go just. And what quick. type of cake is it? Bear in mind, you don't really um, have anything of chocolate, but you'd have a lot, a lot of honey. I imagine this is a Sun Elven Tower. You probably do have, like, lemons and limes and things like that. But oh, nothing. yeah. Let's do, like, a like a lemony, a lemony yeah. cake, you know. That's kind of what I, I fluffy imagine. Fluffy and lemony. Fluffy and lemony. Yeah, very light. Um, well, in theory. It depends on how you roll. Yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see. We'll make a lemony cake. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh the, no! <laughs> you well, you've got done one thing, Snow. The cake you make is very big, um, <laughs> and it does have lemon in it. Uh, the, the the lemon isn't really properly dispersed throughout the cake. It's just one full lemon, like the whole thing. Of the I was lemon. thinking it was at least cut up a little bit, but there's like you, you take bite through, and suddenly there's lemon, like full on like sour lemon. Uh, it looks like a Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> yeah, Afterwards. and it's like weird shape, and it's like oddly browned. But it is like feel, technically a cake. I feel like after, after he bakes it, everyone's eating it, and everyone's probably like, yeah, this is fine. And so probably scratches it, and he's like, no. not touching it. <laughs> so, so I was like, maybe I should just stick to, to rabbit stew in the future. Nice. Cooking is wisdom. Baking is intelligence. <laughs> yeah. Depends. But Depends yeah. if you try to impress anyone or not. Not, not the baking, greatest. Baking is baking. Oh god, your mic is oh, oh no. eating, eating ass. <laughs> we don't know what baking is, but baking may be a warlock pack to micro at this point. Yeah. <laughs> baking warlock when? I mean, we, had, we did have a baking God. eldritch knight at one point. So. A baking warlock, that's um, that's like an old halfling lady. Yeah. <laughs> Done. Yeah. You hacked to the tome, it's just a cookbook. Wait, don't be oh, fair, yeah. there is a halfling divine entity in this world called the Chupacabra. It is a giant <laughs> demon made of sweets and candy. Oh my God, I love and it. Every year, the halflings... <laughs> have a celebration similar to halloween where they give they bake and make sweets and they give candy to the theoretical chupacabra surely it isn't real aside from it's definitely shown up during a campaign before during a baking episode <laughs> so just saying a halfling warlock to the chupacabra could be canon it could make sense we just have to I find what it. the warlock rules would be that's a good like one shot character like an old halfling lady mm -hmm. with sweets uh anyway Literal princess bubblegum, as I'm watching Adventure Time at the moment. Uh, so, you start approaching Valheim. Uh, when you look... Uh, uh, well, actually, one thing you would know in general, Adelhard, uh, it is approaching the end of the month. It's actually switching months. 
which means there's mm -hmm. no moon in the sky. The moon is always out in the middle of the month in Yavaskir. And that's a really fucking bad omen in your culture. As yeah. even those who don't explicitly worship the moon or the moon queen in recent years, there's a lot of moon-based things baked into the core of Valheim culture, whether you're an Olvaxian or a Raven Lord. <laughs> And approaching the city from a long voyage when there, during uh, when there's no moon in the sky at all, like none, like there is right now, is a really bad omen to the point that you have been on ships that have deliberately slowed down for a long time. Yeah. Um, so there's also very little vision during the night when you're traveling because there's no moon. There is the stars, and and it means that when you're flying, and you're probably flying pretty high because you're about to approach a city. It's really, really dark. There's just dark of the snow below you. But you're far away from settlements. There's very little starlight. The auroras occasionally show up, but they're further north usually. So it's very, very dark and gloomy. If you do look out during the day, the terrain you're traveling over is snowy wildlands you know you're not traveling over ice lakes at this point it's snowy wildlands the kind of areas you've explored in in chapter one just these are more to the east uh lots of snowy hills occasionally large beasts some glaciers you actually see a pair of giant snails with icebergs on their backs slowly migrating somewhere um and then you you go across the uh you go around the mountain and get to see some of Valheim from above. This is, you know, the city does illuminate at light a little bit and it's cloudy. Uh, the weather is uh, starting to get a little cloudy, but it's not really cloudy enough for cover, especially as you're taking that extra day. And it's during the night that the storm gets worse. Howling outside. But it's not buffeting the ship very hard. It's not buffeting the windows it's not shaking the curtains but the wind is really really loud hissing howling almost screaming doesn't seem normal or natural like he's give me a there. nature check nature. and anyone can do this it's also yeah, peeps, peep wants to do the thing. Oh, no, come on, don't do this now. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. But peeps also a Dumbo. Uh. Okay, well, peep, you're like, this is weird and you don't like it. Snow, you look at sap, like, look outside the ship, and the ship is fine. You felt it be buffeted by storms. It flies very stable, but storms, especially high up, do move it. You know, all of Python draw gently rock one way or another occasionally um and you do see a shrieking face in the cloud lots of them and uh, alhard you are aware as a student student of the arcane there is something a very rare phenomenon uh, called several things but all along the lines of a spirit storm where the mm -hmm. dead are essentially coalesced into a weather phenomenon uh it does seem to happen more often in around elven communities. That's just a weird curiosity. As Velheim has an elven population and you are a half-elf, you probably found that interesting. Um, it is strange and usually quite localized and there's not really any known cause. You rode pretty well. You So I will say that some academics, because you definitely would... You, Adelhard is the kind of person who reads like academic papers for fun, would think that maybe yes. it's linked to the conjunction of this realm and the Fell realm, which is one of the mm. realms of the dead. But regardless, it's around. And uh, essentially, there are ghosts in this storm that are spiraling around the ship. Maybe the divine nature of the tower is protecting you somewhat, but that howling is not just wind, it's wraiths as well. Mm. Mm. You don't know necessarily because it's quite localized whether the city below is suffering this as well. And it's the kind of thing that it it's not always weird enough that everyone notices. You know, sometimes it's just a bad, mm. weird storm. Like, okay, the air feels kind of yeah. weird. 
And then, but, but sometimes it's Chronicles of, like, a town being attacked by ghosts, essentially, because of this storm. And you're very high up, I imagine, because mm -hmm. you don't want to be seen. But if, what if one possesses Goldie and then <laughs> crashes the... <laughs> oh, no. Can Goldie be possessed? Does a ghost <laughs> understand clockwork? Who knows? <laughs> if it's a Ravenlord ghost. Depends on a ghost. Yeah. Hmm. What do I do? I mean, so Snow sees the faces. Would Adelhard explain more what Adelhard knows? Uh, yes, and he would actually go in excruciating detail. Okay. <laughs> Snow, <laughs> Snow would be like... To, to the point where you probably don't understand anything. <laughs> Yeah, so at the end, just be like, uh, uh, well, maybe we could like do some sort of ritual for the ghosts. Are we better just getting out of here? It's a very localized phenomenon. We should be out of it soon. Ship is not moving currently. Oh, okay. you well, you you would have thought it was. When you mm -hmm. say that, you realize the ship is not moving. Oh. Um, Goldie, could you move us out of here? Mm, negative. There is a pocket Why? of extremely strange weather phenomenon. Going through it might cause damage to the hull of this structure. Can we go over it? Goldie, that, that definitely seems to be... Like, Goldie can't make a curious face. He has a curious <laughs> face. And the ship does just start rising slowly. Uh, because that is a good question. Maybe you can go over if not through. Um, you do hear a lot more screaming and screeching from the, 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 the storm, from the spirit storm. And a pair of wraiths are going to materialize through the walls. It seems like it takes some quite a lot of difficulty. More on the ground, because I guess you're kind of, you're not, you have to go through the storm even above. Um, but they are going to materialize into the house. It came from inside the house. Um, and you can give me some initiative rolls. This would be oh, no. no battle map, because I don't have one ready for the okay. inside house. We, yeah. We've rested by now, right? Because it's been a yeah, few yeah, days. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's been like six days. Nearly a whole week. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you know what I should do? Uh, there we go. I changed the side of advantage on my initiative rolls now. Nice. Yeah, it's one of those things that's actually built into Roll 20's D&D &D set, which is actually kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah, so that, it looks like it just did one, but it is two. It was a 14 and a 7, and the 14 is the one. Yeah, I know it doesn't, um... Yeah, it doesn't show Like, roll multiple but... at once, which is fine. Yeah. This music is very calm, but I assure you it's a spooky situation. Although, you know, you, you guys you guys have fought ghosts this campaign, so it's not the, the most scary thing in the world. You you are practical people at this point, you know. You're not, uh, you ain't afraid of no ghost. I mean, I'm surprised none of you beat me to it. I mean, come on at this point. <laughs> pretty easy reference to do. Uh... Go. That's ghost in music. That's ghost in music right there. Okay. Uh, the wraiths charge in with a natural 20 roll on initiative, giving them an initiative of 23. So they are going to swoosh into the house. At first, they were kind of pulling through. Um, rarely would any of you have seen this. If you see a ghost, they're incorporeal. But because this is a divine structure to some degree, it, it, they, they have difficulty doing it. Um, almost like someone pulling through mud, but their whole body, which I guess some of you have probably seen before. Um, and the, uh, the ghosts do fly through, 
Uh, one looks for the largest form life force they see, which is snow. Uh, and is going to... <sighs> at you. The inside of the tower is not huge. You're all pretty much always between a movement away from any combatant or person. It on the same floor, and you are all in the same floor. You're all in the same room. Uh, your AC is what right now, Snow? 15. It doesn't hit a 15. You can uh, duck out of the way of the ghost at you. The other one is going to attack Adelhard. Because Adelhard has the biggest mm -hmm. brain. <laughs> that is going to be a hit. Okay. Oh, no. You're too busy explaining. <laughs> Or mesmerizing, being like, ah, yes, this is a, this is exactly how a spirit storm should go. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, ghost! Okay. It's going to be twenty necrotic damage, and then give me a constitution oh, saving throw. Here's a, a lot. It's a ghost. What the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> and this isn't um, like a. The, the, these aren't like graceful. Like Edelvin ghosts or whatever, or like a constitution uh, uh, saving throw. Yeah, a constitution saving throw, or like a, 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 a the ghost of a spurned mother. These are like shredded wraiths. These are ghosts that have been through the tumble dryer a few times in whatever horrible place has spit them out into the spirit storm. They are tattered seeming, not like a creature in tattered robes. Like the very bonds that keep them together are tattered and you start to realize why Edelhard once you feel them raking their claws through you um you just you feel that you feel the uh, <laughs> like it's necrotic damage but it's almost psychic you know there's a there's a pain that travels through it um your hit point maximum is reduced further by that uh, 20 oh god for how long? Hmm. A while. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I am at 25 HP already. Yeah, Adelhard <laughs> is one of the squishiest <laughs> people in the there. party and does need to be saved from a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> Vincent. Um, Vincent is going to uh, know what these, knowing what these creatures are likely uh, undead here. He's going to reach out and just kind of bless everybody in the room. Um, and give everybody a D4 to attack rolls and saving throws. Um, and then uh, move next to Adelhar to try to better protect uh, uh, them from, from any more in, any more incoming insult, onslaughts. Is Bless an action to cast, or is it a bonus action? It is an action. Really? Yeah. I, mean, I believe you. I always thought it was a bonus action. I might be thinking of something else, though. Uh, okay, in which case you're defended, Adelhard, you, and you've seen, like, you, this isn't your first fight together at this point. You know that Vincent you can defend people really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, uh -oh. But also, at the same time, you feel your life force being not stolen, uh, suppressed. Mm -hmm. um, and free interact, he'll, he'll grab his shield and, and take it off his back as well. Okay. Adelhard, it's your turn. Uh, ghosts. Ghost breaking its claws oh, through man. your body. Hmm. Uh, okay. I'm going to, um... Is there one near me? Yeah, so one is near snow, and one is essentially on you, Adelhard. It's like kind of clawed you in the back. It's it is within melee mm -hmm. of you and Vincent. And uh, then I'm going to cast the the green flame light cantra and okay. that. Yeah. That yeah, that's a hit. Oh, yeah, that's effective. Yeah. It, you you could see the effect. It is a deeply effective strike. Okay, that's the turn then. Okay. Snow. It snows a bit surprised. But yeah, I'm sure he kind of like ducked under the thing lunging at him. He's then just going to pull out his axe because he, uh, he knows it's magical. And, uh, 
he will just start going like bam, bam and just start to whack at the thing. Bam! And your life force is gone. <laughs> uh, there's he's gonna rage um, and just leap into action. Whoa! And it's magical okay. damage, so that that cuts through hard. Yeah. yeah. And uh, another one as he slashes back the other way. Less damage, but yeah. <laughs> it's strong strikes. I mean, they go. It, it, it's only six two. These aren't tactical combatants. They're almost yeah. feral. But at the same time, a ghost never expects to be hit by a corporeal blade. Uh, the magic of the axe is not necessarily evident, although who knows if they have some kind of magical sight. Um, but it strikes heavily. It almost catches on the ribbons that these specters are and pulls on them more, making them even more ragged and worn. Peep. Next turn is the Wraiths, and if it hits Adelhard that hard again, Adelhard <laughs> might no longer be alive. Uh, well, Peep is going to uh, blast that one next to Adelhard uh, with two Eldritch Blasts. Uh, advantage, because pack tactics. Right. Okay, it's a hit. It is another hit. It's, it's small damage, but it, it, damage. it strikes. Okay. Damage. Let us attack Adelhard first. I'm going to invoke disadvantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Protect. So it ends up rolling a three. <laughs> so you'll find this time, but the, the Wraith is not leaving either. It's like prowling like uh, a hungry predator now that a creature is wounded. Um, the other one is actually going to fly away from snow and up to peep. And is going to Would I get an attack? And up to me, or is it not that far? I don't know. Uh, what... It is far enough, but not against this. It like, kind of flies through the walls and the tables. Oh, it's not necessarily okay. using conventional travel. Um, <laughs> peep, what's your AC right now? 16. It gets a 17, baby! Give me a constitution save! <laughs> oh, no. you, get a, you get a d4 from Bless. You do get a d4 oh. from Bless, which is actually pretty massive. Uh, if it rolls a 4. Well, it's a good job you saved. It's gonna roll quite... It, it, it's rolling quite high damage so far, but I can't find an, the right amount of dice for this, so I'm having to roll some dice again. <laughs> It's 26 necrotic damage, but you make your save and you manage to hold on to your life force. You almost see this echoey silhouette of Peep being half drained by the Wraith, but it, it, it is like almost compressed back in. As that comes back in, I'm just gonna, you see like a fire build up. Get away! And I'm gonna hellish rebuke. Yo! Let's go! Uh, cast at level one. A two. Can I? No, I'm gonna up tap. No, I can't. I've only got two. I've got two <laughs> slots at level one. Yeah, you're, as a I'm warlock, fine. you okay. only ever have your highest level spell slots. You'll never have anything else. Yeah. So you you yeah. you always cast at max tilt, which is very peep. Now I think about it, it is gonna save, but it takes half damage, I believe. So that's six. No, six damage. I mean, six damage, and I, I gave these these guys a... Uh, they aren't weak to fire, but they aren't resistant to it. So, um... Yeah, it, it, it hits pretty hard, and it does, like, <sighs> recoil back. Vincent, defending Adelaide. Uh, yes, Vincent is going to uh, put himself in between this, this creature and Adelhard. Um, and attack it twice as he's drawing his long sword, spinning around. He's going to swing it twice at the creature. Uh, uh, but I get a D4. I get a D4 on both of those. I don't know if that matters. Add that D4. Always add it. That's for the first one. First one's a miss. Okay. Second one's a hit. Okay. Um, and I will uh, unload a smite into this creature. Uh, second level smite. It's a 
There's the smite damage. Oh, that's weak. That um, is and then a little sad. There's a slashing damage. Right. Okay. Um, and then I will. I don't know that I will be able to, try, but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try to use my shield to push the creature away from Adelhard and then like step into position between the, the two of them. Yeah, when you try to do that, I'm not even gonna make you roll. It, it, there's there's nothing to push. I kind of figured I just wanted, I was yeah. gonna give it a shot. Even though dragon scale, not the right kind of magic. I, it would be pretty cool. That would be like a secret buff if you had a magic shield being able to shield bash. Ghosts. Ghosts. To be fair, it, it makes sense. Uh, maybe that's it just, on the shopping list in the future. As he like grunts into it, he just says, fuck off, ghost! And then tries to shove <laughs> into <laughs> Nothing it. Happens. You like knock over a candelabra on the table. <laughs> Nothing else. Uh, Adelhard. Well, there is uh, no place to run, and it's safe on your Vincent anyway, so we are fighting. Yeah. Uh, Green flame blade again. Uh, you I could like run upstairs or downstairs, flame. but you'd get opportunity attacks unless yeah. you're disengaged. Yeah. Uh, this green flame blade is more like this uh, this beautiful sea green rather than. And it's a hit. You roll a lot better with this than like anything else. Yeah. Oh, so massive, dude. The, uh, the wraith attacking you is by far very withered and worn now. Mm -hmm. Wraiths, especially during a spirit storm, as they get more ragged, it goes from being like torn cloth to almost like a broken video screen. Of course, something you'd have no concept of in this world, but you broken glass, you know, broken spyglass maybe, yeah. but just the way a ghost starts to look, I just realized I'm making a game that may be set in Yavaskir and I have to try and replicate this effect now. Um, but it is, they get more and more distorted as they start to tear more and more and pull together, but it, it's having a harder time holding together more and more the more damage that is dealt. Snow. Mm -hmm. So that one looks more hurt than the this one point. by Vince, uh, Vincent and Adelhard is, yeah. Okay. One by yeah, he'll Snow jump in and try to... Ended, yeah. He'll jump in and try to smack that one. Would I be able to, like, since I'm kind of out of the way now... And I have a lot of movement. Would I be able to position myself to flank it? Or is it like yeah, in the wall? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, okay. it's not in the wall. Okay. So then I will flank it and just start hacking away at it. There's one. Yeah, it's a hit. It's one of the highest damage in the world, though. Yeah. But that Same is that much <laughs> closer. And with that strike, it's hard to say if a ghost can ever be banished, especially during a spirit storm. But it gets into smutch, such a torn up situation that it it sort of ceases to be, at least in the physical, material world. Okay. That's Beep. for me. You're being, uh, you're being ghosted like you're on Twitter.com. Uh, I'm guessing no one else is next to this one? No one else is next to this one or you. That's fine. Everyone cared more uh, about Adelard and Pete. That's fine, that's fine. Uh... People pop a fighting spirit for advantage, and that's five hit points, and then go for showing showing. With the battle axe. Oh, it is meant to be advantage, ignore that one, I'm done. Do, 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 do you yeah. have advantage? Where'd you get advantage from? Fighting spirit? Uh, fighting spirit, yeah. Okay, yum 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 yum. Uh, both are hits. And your axe is magical, it's the other half of the axe that Snow has! Because you will ask yeah. for it. Be that way. Uh, it is that that ghost is going to attack you, Pete. It's it. gonna hit. Maybe don't. Maybe maybe, maybe calm it a little bit. No, you said bring it. And the ghost. The ghost heard. <laughs> ghost to anything if not ironic. It's gonna be twenty-seven necrotic damage. Give me a Constitution save. <laughs> oh. Yeah, uh, ghosts hit hard. Plus D4! Plus D4! <laughs> That's a 14! That is literally the line of a pass that you get there. Woo! 
It's like the ghost <laughs> kind of flies through you and tears and pulls at Peep, and you feel your your life essence being pulled away. It's not even trying to consume it; it's just trying to remove it, tear it away. And you just you, hold on. Maybe you're even starting to believe the lie that you're challenged and blessed uh, by a Rovigan. That fuck moment. it, whatever. One more hellish rebuke. Why not? Yeah, baby. It's gonna fail its deck save. It's gonna take the 11 damage. It does not uh, die again, but it is incredibly, incredibly torn up and withered at this point. Vincent. Uh, Vincent will um, just reach out at the creature and hit it with a um, a guiding bolt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The ghost is banished in a strike of silver flame <laughs> and you know what you are you, you are banishing the spirit with a guiding bolt crit uh, the spirit storm ends it's like okay and the, uh, the sky clears outside the room like a shockwave of energy. yes yeah because <laughs> yeah. yes. you know what sometimes it, it, you get what you need Although you actually want to wait for the cloud to uh, to sneak again, but still, <laughs> it's good. In uh, it's just the normal cloud now, right? <laughs> uh, some <laughs> the ghosts bring their own clouds sometimes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the, okay. the spirit storm is <laughs> banished. Yeah, like Adelard and Pete probably both look a little drained. Oh yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> looks Did you see that, Pete? Drained. This is what you have to look forward to, being a, a bright new shining member of Arovagon's followers. Total and utter destruction of such evil monstrosities. Let's have drinks. <laughs> just yes, drinks. First into a pillow, just like... Yeah. Snow was a hit at all. He's like, yes, drinks. <laughs> <laughs> if I drink, oh, I just, I might die. just leaning against the wall and just letting himself... Hold on the floor slowly. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, right, right. Sorry, sorry. Um, does this look like something that, I, like, does this look like something that can be healed or a way to? Uh, to... Adelhard, no, peep. Yes, Adelhard. I mean, you've you've noticed this kind of thing before now a little bit. You know, Adelhard is spiritually drained. Um, peep is being more dramatic, but Adelhard is far more grievously wounded in the spiritual way. You know what I'm imagining right now? In like one room there's Thingy, there's Snow and, and Vincent like dancing like partying and drinking, like caramel dancing and then it goes to the next room where it's like faded through the wall and it's just out hard to beat just crashed onto a bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boys. <laughs> dead. Vultures overhead. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rude thing to call Sabriel's birds. Ha! They had no <laughs> birds on this ship. They can't keep up. They got left at home. Oh. So no more, no more of those kinds of storms. Let's not hide in those. Those are not good for yeah. us. Please. I was getting to that. <laughs> 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 Yeah, Goldie, if you could avoid those in the future, that'd be good. To my limited sensory knowledge, that appeared as an entirely regular storm. I do not understand what you were worried about. Um, maybe we should recalibrate you. Before we <laughs> approach any more storms to hide within them, uh, call me forth and I can see if we run into anything like that again. Yeah. All right. The plan, as you hover tiredly above Velheim, and we will end off today's session. If, uh, next time, the the old uh, trip to Velheim that this party has never been to before. Those who have seen other campaigns that have gone to Velheim, especially old ones, know what you're looking forward to. It's a lovely place. <laughs> Maybe too lovely. <laughs> I have, I have ideas for the future, but they're mischievous ideas. <laughs> oh, no. uh, mischief <laughs> does not go well in Velheim. 
Um, yeah. Nope. No fun allowed. Uh, it is kind of a no fun allowed place. Kind yeah. of. <laughs> It's yeah. for Adelhard as someone from Valheim. Yeah, Adelhard <laughs> is, is very atypical as someone from Valheim, let's say that. You, you guys should hear Valheim humor, it's no laughing matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You say that to a raven lord and they're like, it's not. <laughs> These are very serious jokes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, that's the end of today's session. Why don't we really quickly go around... Oh, I should do that with my new glasses. I got dizzy. Um, we go around the table and talk about everyone and what they've got going on. Um, starting with Zach! Same old, same old. I, uh, we're, we're cruising right along with our, uh, our rehearsals. Uh, show's coming along well with that. And, um... And I spent a lot of time last night writing up uh, levels one through five uh, outline for. It's gonna be a doozy. Nice. No poetry. Yeah, um, I have been uh, just streaming some games, um, more Pagel speedruns. I also started. I'm doing a full playthrough of the original God of War trilogy, and then I'm going to play the new God of War. So it's going to be super that. different, right? Like, yeah, it's even the course vibe of, like, wise. The... I mean, there's there's stuff that yeah. runs through. I don't I don't think I would have liked the original God of Wars, but I I streamed the the, the PS4 God of War, and I really liked it. Yeah, yeah. So I it's just one of those things where I've I've been wanting to play the new one, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to play through the original yeah. trilogy as well, just for fun. I respect and, uh, that. So yeah, so probably most days of the next month you can tune into that. Um, I also though started a Sekiro challenge run where I use the randomizer to make it so that every enemy is replaced with the hardest boss in the game, not scaled or anything. So you do these fun. challenges, and I and I worry <laughs> about you because you're I my friend. I spent three hours yesterday <laughs> on the first mini boss that you have to fight. Did yeah. you? I watched to take inspiration. From that, that was a challenger, Andy, doing <laughs> all of Dark Souls One, where every single enemy was Gwyn. I oh, I didn't see that one, but I that wouldn't be I, that hard. So, Gwyn isn't Gwyn is at least well, a but if every boss. enemy is the the asylum, the first air, the tutorial area was where it was hard because because he's I too big, I remember, he blocks the wall, yeah, the corridors. It's something like if I remember right, it took him like five hours <laughs> to get from the starting area to the fog wall for the first yeah, boss is meant to be bad. Yeah, Soulsborn no, I... fans <laughs> there needs to be yeah. a vaccine for whatever they've got uh, <laughs> I think Yeah, but yeah so anyways I'll probably be live in like an hour after this with Sekiro getting my shit kicked in <laughs> but yeah you know where to go AJ I've been doing a lot of Alta Speak was a bit slow, but I've got some stuff. You've done, done so many like next so many like character designs. Like every day oh, there's like sketches, two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like Well More plans next week. It was a bit slow this week. Also I've been reading a lot, so expect random ramblings about whatever I'm reading currently. But that's right. it for me. Okay, and Quills. Hey, I'm currently very warm because I'm dressed in Virgil. If you want to keep seeing me dressed as Virgil, make sure to jump into my Twitch, voice underscore Quills, next Friday, 9 p.m. BST. So basically one hour after this show starts time-wise. Yeah. Um, but next Friday, because uh, I'm doing a You Laugh, You Lose stream where uh, on my Discord, there's a channel you can submit videos uh, and for every life I lose, I am going to be tasting one of these hot sauces. So, and it goes from normal, like, basic, uh, like, jalapeno, uh, or garlic herb, all the way up to ghost pepper. And I don't handle spice very well. So, uh, be sure to <laughs> jump into my Discord to submit a video, um, and be there for that. Otherwise, it's just the usual shit posting and then on Twitter on YouTube. Nice. And then there's me. Uh, this show is supported by Patreon. I mentioned at the start of the stream. Uh, if you pay, uh, support for $5 or more a month, there is a lot of extra show 
or Patreon. Not with these guys, but an entirely different cast of kind of like the original group that we add new people every now and again. So there's like new uh, people learning new things. Uh, that show is on a bit of hiatus right now, but there is probably like 300 hours of various shows. Uh, if you are new to the setting, I always recommend um, Fallow Gem Academy because it is a it's a high school campaign basically. So the characters are learning, like, there are real les lessons I am giving in character to these people about the nature of magic and the history of the world, which is always relevant if, if you like the lore. Um, the main thing on there right now on my Patreon is uh, teasers of the game I'm making. Don't get excited, it, it's probably never gonna come out as a game, like, on Steam, but uh, there may be prototypes put on uh, Patreon, and it's... There are some gifts of funny broken things occasionally. There's, there's not as many funny broken things as maybe there should would have been back in the day, but there's there's the occasional uh, meme uh, on there and just interesting things as I am tinkering on that in my free time. Streamwise, I'm doing a little bit less because I'm working on that, but Atlas will start soon! I know it was meant to start yesterday, uh, but actually that would have been a bad day for me, so I talked to the, the, the devs and they were like, actually, we're gonna hold it back. No, they just, they just didn't, they just didn't start the serving yet. Um, so when that starts, uh, it's the continuation of last season. I'm still playing Richard Doomps. If you like that, uh, a lot of people are coming back. Not the king, the king's dead, but a lot of people are coming back. Uh, we're actually getting some people from other factions joining us and then... Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of that. That'll be a lot of um, streams a lot earlier in the day, usually. Because um, that's when people are on. So that's going to be really, really fun. So look forward to that. Probably not too many streams until that goes on. Support on Patreon. If you like this content, you want free more, more free content, there is a lot on YouTube. Some of those series are a little crusty, uh, but most of them are. So uh, if you like it, feel free to look back. Um, if you like this campaign, uh, Here Be Heroes is essentially the precursor campaign to this one. A lot of thematic similarities. Uh, so feel free to check that out. And that's it. We should be back next week unless Quill is is really literally butthurt from the spicy curry sauces. Uh, when we'll see. Um, so for now, we're going to say thank you to the people who already support on Patreon. And see you next time.